Well, here we are then, out on the water on the new Windy 34 Elise, the spiritual successor to the 34 Kamsin, one of the best boats that Windy has ever built. So no pressure then. However, they have got a bit of a secret weapon, which is that they've got Espinoino designing these boats, and he designed a little old thing called Dilbar. So there's plenty of pedigree here. We've got a chance to see Charlotte here at the Cannes Boat Show. Let's see how it performs. I'm Jack Haynes, welcome to Yacht Buyer. Well, anybody who knows Windy knows that they are all about the driving experience and it's a very smash and grab attempt at discovering what that is like today because, as I said, we're at the Cannes Boat Show, there's other journalists on board, it's quite hectic, but it is also quite choppy, so it's a good trial for this hull. There's lots of engine options. This boat's got a single Volvo Penta D6 440 on a stern drive. You can actually have two of those as another option and that boat will do 54 knots. This one will top out just shy of 40 and is probably most happy cruising at about 30 knots. But you have a nice wide cruising band of anywhere really between 20 and 35 knots. And we're going along now at 25 knots and yeah, we're just riding over this chop just as you hope a windy should. And because it's a single stern drive, handling is absolutely glorious. It's sure-footed, the steering is light, but you get a nice amount of feedback. And you've got a nice sharp turning circle as well, and you get a good bit of heel on in the turns too. It's a very messy sea. There's loads of wash from other boats. There's a bit of an underlying chop as well. But at this time of day, when you're coming home from your day in a bay or at the beach and you just want to get back, this is when this boat really comes into its own. And even though it's very open, you're very protected behind this windscreen. I'm not actually sitting, I'm on the bolster. You could sit one lower than this and then you'd have very little breeze in your face at all. Even though it's very exposed, you feel lovely and cocooned here at this helm station. Let's just talk about range for a second. It's going to change depending on you know which engine options you go for how much kit you've got on board but this one with the d6 440 cruising at 25 knots you're looking at probably around 55 to 65 liters an hour giving a range of say 250 nautical miles it's very comfortable doing it as well and one thing that you do notice is just how simple and paired back this helm is there's no dials there's one big screen you've got the 16 inch raymarine mfd and then you've got your little Volvo Penta screen where you've got fuel consumption and very quite simple sort of engine information. But everything is contained here in this screen. And you've got a nice run of switches down here for lights, pumps, that sort of thing. But it's incredibly driver focused as Windy's always are. You can feel that Windy DNA. It may be a new generation of Windy with Espinoino at the design helm, but it still feels like good old Windy. So performance is really comfortable on this boat and it rides very nicely as well. But another thing that makes driving it so pleasant is the suite of electronics. This particular boat's got the optional trim assist and it's also got the Humphrey interceptor system. So both of those are working together to ensure the running attitude is as good as it can possibly be. So I'm not having to think about what the trim tabs are doing. I just set the speed I want to do and the boat is doing all of the rest. So now it means you can really just settle back into this fantastic driving position and really let the boat do the work. Anyway, that's what it's like to drive. That's a really important part of what Windy is all about. But of course, we need to look at the rest of the boat as well. So let's have a closer look at the decks and interior. Well, as is the way with boat shows, somebody who's more important, and by that I mean has probably bought one of these things, has turned up. So the boat's going straight back out for another sea trial. That's fine though. We'll come back tomorrow and do the tour then. See you then. Right, we're back, it's the next day, and as long as no one tries to buy this in the next 15 minutes, we can get through the decks and the interior. In terms of the layout, it's pretty much identical to the 37 Chamal, so it feels very familiar, and it also works really well. Typical windy, you've got this massive sun pad back here with the, the sliding backrest, so you can slide this along the length of this entire pad, and then it pins in place. The whole thing also lifts up to reveal the engine hatch. We'll look at that properly later. Underneath my feet here, you have dedicated fender storage, so all the boat's fenders slot away really neatly in there, so they're out the way when you're traveling. 
and then you step down a bit into this cockpit and you, even though it's very open, feel very cocooned. When you're sitting down in the dinette, you've got a good amount of protection from the windscreen, you feel very safe, very protected. And this is a really nice sociable area. It's nice that they've included this. It's not just wasted space, you know, you've got another perch there. And actually when the boat's going along, this is a nice place to sit and watch the wake streaming out over the back of the boat. This table expands, really nice detail here, the way they've got these cup holders inset into the wood here, and you've got handholds here as well, of course. And then you actually have a high-low table. So this drops down. It actually drops all the way flush. You have infill cushions, and you can have another sand pad there if you want. So you've got the sand pad there, one in the middle, and of course you've got the cushions up on the foredeck as well. So there's plenty of sunbathing space on this boat. And on that note, of course, on a day like this, you're probably gonna want some shade. And as you just see tucked down there, that's where the bimini is. So that tucks away when it's down, you can bring it up, it expands obviously, and you get a nice bit of shade over the central part of the boat where you're gonna be spending most of your time. Now to maximize the space on board, there are no side decks. So the boat goes right out to its full beam, which is why this cockpit feels so spacious. Of course, that means to go forward, you have to go through the screen. So you've got these steps up here, you walk through the screen, that door opens up, and then you're out onto the fore deck. And there's guardrails up there as well, so it's easy to hang and tie fenders. Now there's a little fridge up here as well. You haven't got a wet bar, but you have got some cooling space up here, so you don't have to dive down there to get your drinks out. And speaking of that, let's go and have a look at the accommodation. So principally a day boat, but of course there is accommodation down here. As you can see, for someone of six foot, not quite full standing headroom, so you have to stoop a little bit. Interestingly, there isn't a dinette set down here. It is purely for sleeping. You've got a double bed forward. You've got twins amidships. Very little headroom there. It really is crawl in and go to sleep. But there's a bit of storage and some underlighting, and it's all finished very nicely. It's just a little bit cramped. But there's actually a decent enough galley area. You've got a little sink down here. You've got another fridge. You've got plenty of storage and a, a dedicated bin, things like that lots of countertop space nice to have these fiddled edges so stuff can't roll off when the boat's going along and then a you know, good amount of storage in these eye level lockers for your windy branded mugs cups so it would be nice if they were fiddled as well because they might rattle around a bit when you're out on the water there's more storage at eye level around the bed you've got an escape hatch and also a sky hatch there so you get some natural light coming down here there are some slim windows but having the cushions off and some natural light pouring in there will help it does have a separate heads compartment, probably more important than the accommodation on a boat like this that's generally going to be used as a day boat. It's a good size and it's not just a wet room either, it's got a separate shower and toilet cubicle. It's not enormous, but like the rest of the interior, it's nicely finished, nice countertop, you've got the mirror with inset lights, lots of storage. Yeah, not huge, but built to the typical windy standard. The nice thing about having this big powered hatch is that access to the engine is incredible and especially when you've got the single engine there's so much room to move around and to check on every part of the engine that it makes servicing really really easy the twin engines are the ones for the performance but i think the balance of performance and efficiency plus the ease of access will make this a very popular option thanks very much for watching that review a whistle stop tour but i hope it gave you a sense of what the Windy 34 Elysia is like, especially out on the water, which is really where this boat shines. If you did like the video, please do hit the like button and remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified every time we upload a new video.